Good morning. The loss of a child is the ultimate parent's nightmare. The loss has a ripple effect through family, friends, and even strangers. The loss is intensified when the death is at the hands of a killer. If the loss could be grieved over and tucked quietly in the heart, the long process of trying to heal could begin. However, for the parents of a murdered child, that process is constant turmoil, especially bringing terrible details of the worst time of your life up to the surface again and again. We're here today because we represent many families within the state that go through the same thing every other year. I know for us, we start a letter campaign months before we're scheduled to meet with the parole commissioner. The week of the parole hearing is painful. Trying to wrap your head around the idea that the killer may be set free. What would we do? This is a terrifying process for those of us that have to consider it. We have degrees of murder in our judicial system. Why shouldn't there be degrees for parole hearings and release considerations? This bill gives these families the opportunity for a longer period of time before they must be subjected to everything I previously spoke of. I believe this bill needs to be passed. There are so many people that suffer due to the frequent disruptions in their life. It tr and it truly feels like a prison sentence after losing a part of yourself. Okay. Now I gotta get your stuff. All right, so these guys are professional speakers. You gotta start out a little bit lighter. I have to write mine down. Um, but thank you, good morning everyone, uh, for taking the time to cover this press release of this bill. Dory and I are here on behalf of my son, Derek Roby, who was murdered by Eric Smith. Um, I'm kind of just skimming through this because ev everything's been said a number of times. This bill would allow 24 to 60 months in option for the time allowed between parole hearings. Specific language to this bill has been updated and clearly states what the violent offense is. Currently, the two-year time span Families such as ours relive this every two years. It has been 23 years since we lost Derek. He was uh, brutally murdered, and this was our eighth parole hearing this past April. For me, it was even more emotional uh, than the first seven. It just isn't fair for families to feel that a murderer has an option <clears throat> to walk every two years when we walk the rest of our lives without him. Here we go. <laughs> but like most families, we will still meet um, with the parole board to let them know that parole should be denied. <clears throat> I was just asked recently, actually, uh, why more families aren't lobbying and, and in Albany to try to help make changes. And my answer was, as these guys can attest, it's emotionally exhausting. <clears throat> yeah. Dory and I are in this position, and we both hope that we can speak for those who can't. Others have been here many times, uh, and each knows the hurt and emotional energy it takes to rel relive the memories to make a difference. I was recently contacted by a family that is just starting the parole process and they also contacted Mr. Pomisano and was told thank you for trying to make a difference as they feel two years is not right. Having the option of five years would give us and other families more time to deal with our loss. This needs to be an option granted to the parole board in cases of murder 
and other stated offenses. I also appreciate the support that everyone gives us every two years. It is hard to ask for that support, even though it is given freely. Our supporters relive it every two years also, and I don't feel that is fair to them or the community where it happened. Communities, though, need to know that the support is important. How each person's life has been affected by the crime is important, as it impacts the future risk assessments data considered by the parole board in its decisions. <clears throat> I created a petition in support of this bill and currently have over 1,800 signatures and many comments, which Mr. Pomisano has, why this needs to be passed. For any that are in the position to get this passed, take time to consider supporting this bill. Please contact others and show the support. I hope that this bill is one that each member who has a chance to vote never has to personally relate to. We ask for your support of this bill, and if anyone has suggestions, which I've been getting some, on what else we can do, please let me know. And thank you for taking the time to hear us today, as all we do is in memory of our son and others that have to deal with this now and unfortunately in the future. And to end it a little bit more lighthearted, I don't know if any of you have grandkids. Our kids love the turtles, so we're going turtle power. It's a, uh, an honor to be here today with uh, these crime victims. And this is a crime victims uh, bill that we're talking about. It's a common sense bill. Uh, as Phil Palmisano uh, had said. Uh, I want to thank Senator Lavelle for his sponsorship uh, of this bill. And I know uh, uh, he's upset that he couldn't be here today because he cares uh, very deeply about this legislation, uh, as I do. Uh, but it's really something that makes sense, something that we, uh, we should be doing, something that we've tried for years here to do. We've passed it in the Senate. We will, as Fred says, we will move it out of committee uh, this week. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm confident that it will come to the floor and pass in the Senate uh, once again, uh, and we hope that we get movement uh, in the assembly. Uh, and it's great to have so many assembly sponsors here uh, with us this morning for this. But uh, I want to thank uh, the crime victims' families uh, for being here today, to be such strong advocates uh, as you are for this year in and year out, to, uh, to constantly relive the tragedies that, that happened to you uh, a long time ago, uh, and to be here to, to help us in our efforts uh, to move this legislation forward. Um, you know, Fred and Phil really said it all uh, about the legislation. There's no, no need to uh, uh, belabor that, and I look forward to uh, your remarks uh, here this morning, and thank you for being with us. Thank you all for coming today, uh, especially you and the media, for being here to help us get attention to this uh, important issue. Uh, I certainly want to point out some of my colleagues that are here, Assemblyman uh, Palumbo, Assemblyman Saladino, Assemblyman Bob Oaks, Assemblyman Dean Murray, of course, uh, my senator, our uh, good friend, Senator Tom O'Mara, and Assemblyman Peter Lawrence. Uh, I want to say thank you to Assemblyman Thiel and Senator Laval for their leadership on this issue, a very important issue, uh, and we appreciate your efforts on, on this. And, and probably most importantly to the families who are here uh, who took the time to travel um, from far away uh, to hear, and you'll hear uh, their personal story and how this impacts them. Uh, particularly, I'd like to say thank you to the Roby family, a uh, constituents of mine and Senator O'Mara for uh, you know, and all of you but for taking the time to come up here and, 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 and fighting for this issue and sharing your story and how this impacts you so we can make positive change for families like you and others around the state who are being impacted by this. So thank you all for being here. We appreciate it. Quite frankly, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is just common sense legislation. Uh, we just want to make clear, the, the, the amendments we made specifically just four crimes, murder in first degree, murder in the second degree, predatory sexual assault, and predatory sexual assault against the child. Those four crimes would constitute uh, giving an, uh, the parole board discretion of taking this up to 60 months instead of the mandatory 24 months. And just to think about it, um, think about the families and the stories you hear from them. It's not just every two years because about 18 months prior to parole hearing, they get notices in the mail. Uh, the Roby family, for example, just had a uh, parole denied uh, for the, 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 the Eric Smith who killed their young son. Uh, Derek at the age of four in April. Uh, but around Thanksgiving, every other year, 
uh, in the holidays, they're getting letters and starting to prepare for this because uh, they have to make sure uh, that this doesn't happen and someone isn't released from parole. Uh, this is almost, if for New York State and with the changes we made in this bill, for the legislature and the governor not to act and pass this and put this in law, in my opinion, it's almost another crime against these family members. Uh, to have to relive the horrible tragedy and ordeal that these families went through, through losing a loved one, and then having to relive that every 18 months, starting in 18 months for a six-month process, quite frankly, it's just not fair. And we need to take into consideration the families who are here and the loss that they've, they've faced. Uh, and I think working together in a bipartisan fashion and looking at the language and how the scope is narrowed, I think this is common sense legislation that is the right thing to do uh, to honor uh, the victims of these horrendous crimes and to bring some respite, a little bit of respite. I mean, you're never going to fill that void that these they've lost with their loved ones, but just to give them a little bit of respite instead of having to deal with this every 18 to 24 months, to be able to, on the most heinous of heinous crimes, to give that discretion to the parole board for up to 60 months. And again, just to be clear, it doesn't mean it w can't be less than 60 months. It, they will take it on a case-by-case -case basis, but giving the parole board that discretion and to look at the seriousness of the crime and what happened and the stories from the families and that, I think we think that needs to be considered as part of this process. And we're going we're gonna to work diligently to uh, pursue, push this legislation to kind of educate more of our colleagues on the importance of putting this through and, and, and looking out when we talk about protecting families and families of uh, uh, victims of fa uh, criminal, uh, criminals, uh, victim families who are subject to criminals and, and victims' rights uh, I think the families you'll hear from today give a perfect example of what this legislation is all about and why we need to pass it this year. Uh, so thank you again for being here, Fred. Uh, thank you again for your leadership on this issue. Yeah, there you are. And again, the family. Right and, so, yeah, you there, and of course, Senator Lavelle and my colleagues, and, and of course, the families who you're going to hear from. This is about the families. You know, the politicians are going to speak because that's what politicians do, but this is about the families. And without you here putting a face and a name to this issue, without hearing your personal story, uh, and your passion, and believe me, if you haven't heard these stories, it will hit your heart. And, I, and after hearing these stories, I don't know how anyone would not be able to support this legislation. So we're going to work hard, and I just want to thank everyone for being here today to help uh, get awareness on this very important issue. Thank you.